Hey everyone, Mike Wardinsky here, and today I'm going to be talking about the new features of Lightroom Classic 12.3. Adobe made some pretty big changes to Lightroom, and I thought I would take some time to go over some of these changes and show you how you can implement them into your workflow. But before we get started, don't forget to check out naturemike.com for some great infield workshops, how-to articles, and private post-processing lessons. Okay, so let's get started. Brand new to version 12.3 is a new AI denoise enhancement option. You can see our manual noise reduction features that we're used to are tucked down here underneath this little arrow. But today we're going to be exploring this new AI feature. I'm going to be demonstrating this feature on a high ISO image. You can see this one was taken at ISO 4000. If I zoom in, you can see there's quite a bit of grain in the image. Now I want to show you this image with the old version of noise reduction. So I'm going to click right here. And you can see if I open up the manual noise reduction, my luminance is set to 52 and the detail to 100. And it did a pretty good job of getting rid of the noise. And I'm going to come over to our next image, which was denoised with the new AI feature. And I feel like this one did a slightly better job in the details, specifically in the rocks here and maybe some of the leaves. So I'm going to come back to our traditional one and back to the AI version. At the end of the day, the, the difference between the two denoise methods is relatively small, but this is a brand new feature and most likely Adobe will continue to update it and refine it and it will get better as time progresses. So let's see how it works. I'm going to go ahead and click on my original file here and I'm going to come over to the denoise button in the detail tab. And so I can check this denoise on and off. So that's the original. And if I check it back on, you can see this is the image with the denoise applied. And I have the slider here. There's really only one slider in this, so it's, it's pretty easy to use. If I go to the left, that takes us back closer to the original. And if I push it to the right, that's going to be the maximum amount of denoise that we can do. Now, 100 is pretty intense. It's going to look very cartoony at 100. Um, it does get rid of the noise very good, but it, it makes the image look almost uh, like a painting or um, like a, a very digital image. So I'm going to back that off, and I'm probably going to back it about down to where I was right around 30. That way I can see some noise um, in the image, but not too much noise. And we're just going to go ahead and look at the bottom here. We have estimated time. It says it's going to take 45 seconds to process this. And if you look to the right, it says create stack. The reason this is here is because you're not editing the original raw file. What's going to happen is Adobe is going to create a new DNG file, which is still a raw. It's just no longer going to be your camera's native raw file. Um, and if you cr check create stack, what that will do is it's going to stack the DNG file with the original raw file. I'm just going to leave that unchecked for now, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Enhance. Now on the left-hand side, you'll see this progress bar moving. It's going to take about 45 seconds, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward the video. Okay, our new file is loaded, and if you look at the uh, file name right here, you can see that enhanced-nr-3.dng was added to the original file name. Um, the reason it says dash three is because I've already played around with this a little bit. So I've already had a few. Um, so by default, that would just be enhanced dash NR. So here's our original file once more. And here's our new one with the noise reduction added. And if I look at some of these other photos, this is one done with 50% noise reduction. And coming over we got 70% noise reduction. And again, you can see that this is getting a little cartoony, but it did get rid of all the noise. So this is a little bit of a personal preference, how much noise you want. But again, I typically like to have some noise in the photo so it doesn't look too smooth or too fake. Another highly useful new feature of Lightroom 12.3 is the ability to add curves to a mask. So I've got my mask here. If I just click on this and choose my linear gradient, and I'll just draw from the bottom up, you'll notice down here I have access to the tone curve. And I can just add a nice S curve here with emphasis on the dark. So I'm going to bring the darks down and maybe pop the whites just a little bit. 
and that's going to emphasize the light coming through the wave here. I'm going to add a second one, and this time I'm just going to hit the M key. That's the keyboard shortcut for the linear gradient. I'll bring that in, and again, darken the, the blacks. I pop the whites a little bit, and I'm going to bring that down even a little bit more, and maybe even darken the blacks. Oops. Added another point. Okay. Maybe something like that. And I'm going to actually feather this out to like that. Now I want to emphasize the center of the wave a little bit. So I'll go ahead and add another mass, this time a radial gradient. I'll draw a little oval here. And this time I'm going to pop the whites and I'll pull the blacks down just a tiny bit. And then I can move this around, maybe just like that. And I can turn this layer on and off just by hitting the eye icon. And I can turn all the mask on and off by clicking. So there's the before, and here's the after. In previous versions of Lightroom, you could open an image as a smart object in Photoshop, or you could open multiple images as layers in Photoshop but you couldn't open multiple images as smart object layers in Photoshop. In version 12.3, you can now open up multiple images as smart object layers in Photoshop. This is going to be really useful for folks who do compositing and want the best non-destructive workflow possible. Um, so to demonstrate this just real quickly, I've got two images here. I've got a dark image and a lighter one with, which has the sky blown out a little bit. And I've already done some minor adjustments. If I want to blend these two together, all I have to do is select the first one and command click or control click on a PC to select the second. And then I'll control click on a Mac or right click on a PC on either image and choose edit in and then open as smart object layers in Photoshop. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop and you can see I've got two layers in the same Photoshop document. And if you look right here, you'll notice I've got this little paper icon that means it's a smart object. And if I double click here, it's gonna open up Camera Raw. And you'll notice that my sliders are in the same position that they were in Lightroom. So I can effectively edit a raw file while being in Photoshop. You notice I can move my sliders and they have real time effects. So this is really nice because if you get in Photoshop and you're doing some blending and you decide that you wanna make some adjustments to the raw, you still have access here. I'm not gonna do anything right now. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now to demonstrate just a quick blending, I'm gonna do a, a, I'm gonna add a layer mask here and I'll choose my brush by hitting the B key and I'll change it to 100% opacity. And so I got my bright layer on top, dark layer on the bottom, and so I'm just gonna brush in the dark layer right here. So just by painting black onto the mask, I'm painting in that darker sky. I'm just gonna feather it like that. So there you go, that was just a quick down and dirty example, but I highly recommend opening images as smart objects. That way you have the best non-destructive workflow possible. In the latest version of Lightroom, Adobe added a few portrait masking options as well. So I'm gonna open up this ridiculous photo in the develop module. I'm gonna head over to the masking options and I'm gonna choose person number one. And you can see right now it's set to entire person. I'm gonna uncheck that. The new features in this dialog are facial hair and clothes. And you can see it does a pretty good job. Uh, we've got a couple of areas where it's bleeding into the skin where there's no facial hair um, on the cheeks and down here. Also it missed a little bit of the shoulder between the fingers for the clothes. But all in all, it did a pretty good job. Um, so for right now, I'm gonna uncheck clothes and. Um, I'm gonna do my facial hair and maybe um, maybe the eyebrows as well. So I can I can check both of those and hit create mask. And so now you can see our mask is created. And I'm gonna do I'm just gonna do something ridiculous. Maybe I'll take the tint to blue and or the temperature to blue and the tint towards magenta and basically give myself some nice purple eyebrows and beard. Now, again, this mask wasn't perfect, but that's okay. We can always refine it. So I can just, here we have our mask. I can come down to subtract and I'm gonna choose the brush. Make sure my flow's up pretty high and the feather's also high. And I'm just gonna take the brush here and just kind of brush out the areas where the purple shouldn't be.
And there you go. Now, this was a ridiculous example, but just wanted to show you uh, a couple of the new masking features for people. Also new in version 12.3 is the addition of the eye icons in the develop module. Now these are very similar to the toggle icons that used to be here, except you can't keep them off. They basically turn back on as soon as you let go of the mouse. If you would prefer the toggle icons, you hold the option key on a Mac or alt on a PC, and you'll notice that the toggles appear and then you can toggle something on or off. And then when you let go, you can see that that eye icon permanently has a slash, meaning it's turned off. To turn it back on, hold Option or Alt and turn the toggle back on. And there you go. Finally, Adobe added the ability to choose which version of Photoshop you want to open your photos into. And to get into those settings, we need to go to our Lightroom Classic, choose Settings to open up our preferences. And if we come over to External Editing, you'll notice there's a Photoshop version. And right now I have Adobe Photoshop 2023 and Adobe Photoshop 2022 installed on my computer, so I could choose one or the other. Um, if you only have one version of Photoshop, then you won't have any options here. But if you have multiple versions, this is how you would change them. This could be useful for folks who updated to a new version of Photoshop, but then they find a bug that is getting in the way of their workflow. And so if they would prefer to use an older version, they could come here and choose 2022 or 2021, whichever version that they have installed onto their computer. So that's it. And as always, don't forget to check out naturemike.com for in-field workshops, how-to articles, and private post-processing lessons. I'll see you in the next video.